Hello everyone, um, my name is Daniel and today we are doing a video about salmon. Salmon is one of the fish that I love the most and I love the fishing for salmon very very much. So I think, um, and that's also why we're doing this video, is to give you the opportunity to learn how to fish for salmon at a basic level. So today we're doing a beginner's video about salmon so that you'll have the opportunity to learn some things and to actually go out there, get some gear and just go out fishing for salmon. Because I, I would say to all people who haven't tried this yet, if you love fly fishing, then you'll love salmon fishing. So today we're doing a video about how to get, in, how to get started with two-handed gear with salmon fishing. If you have been following this channel and, and you've seen one or two more of these videos here on, on, the, on the YouTube channel, you'll know that I am quite keen on fishing, on, on fly fishing. Uh, fly fishing is my all-time big passion. I've been doing this for quite many years now, since I was 12, I think, so that's going on 28 years. <laughs> that's a bit fun to say 28 years of doing something that you love but but I have a big big passion for uh, for for fly fishing I love fishing in Denmark I love fishing uh, you know the tropics and and all different kinds of fishing in particular in Denmark I think the sea trout fishing we have on the coast is awesome I love pike I love fishing with the foam beetle for for a sea run brown trouts and and there's just so so many absolutely amazing amazing um, um, different kinds of fishing um, but there is one kind of fishing that stands alone and stands out from all the others and that is salmon salmon is it's a passion it's an almost an obsession at times it's it's a high risk high reward game you could almost say because fishing for salmon is is something that takes up quite a lot of time there is a lot of there is a lot of walking there is a lot of hours on catching a salmon but the rewards in this salmon fishing is also just absolutely amazing these big big shiny chrome fish that you know have gone through so much to enter the river and just you know are here and then all of a sudden, out of the blue, one of these magnificent, magnificent, majestic be beasts, creatures, just grab your fly and, and you're in for, you know, you're in for a, for a battle. And, th and then you get to release them again. It's, it's just, it's just in every respect, just epic, almost. Um, I've fished a lot for salmon. And, uh, and I've, I've fished uh, for many years for salmon. And I've seen a lot of people fish for many years for salmon. So that's why um, this is also a caution because once you go go fish salmon and once you hook one, I can almost guarantee you that this will change the way, the lens through which you view the world. I know this sounds kind of dramatic and, and kind of profound and stuff, but, but for me at least and for so many people I know, this is the case. There is a before and there is an after you have become a salmon fisherman. And you should know that before you embark on, uh, on, on, on this venture, because salmon is awesome. Salmon is powerful and beautiful. Um, 
I, you can almost say, because I was, I was thinking a lot about this in, in the car down here. I was thinking a lot about these and, uh, and, and there have been a few things in my life that has, you know, radically and drastically changed the way, uh, the, the paradigm of, of basically my existence. I know it's going to sound a bit, you know, grandiose and stuff, but the, the, the most important thing and the biggest thing I ever experienced was becoming a father, of course, which was... Just, you know, the way the world just shifted. Everything changed from that moment when that new life was, was there. That, of course, is, is, was the pinnacle and, and nothing comes close to that. And I was about to say nothing compares, but then again, you know, the first time I hooked a big, shiny silver salmon, it made not the same and not even close to the same, but the second largest impact on the rest of my life, I think. Because salmon does kind of the same. It radically changes some, you know, some, some of the nervous system in your brain. I think it's get, it, it gets com configured differently. There is the life before and then there's the life after your first salmon. And you should know that before you start on this. I urge every single one of you out there to start fishing for salmon because the experiences, the adventures, the, uh, the things you, you, you get to, to, to see and, and, and experience is just, it's just awesome. So if you haven't tried salmon, I urge you to do so, but with caution. When you're starting out uh, fishing for salmon, I, <laughs> I, I, can, I can completely understand if you think that this whole salmon world is a bit crazy and a bit filled with a lot of new and strange you know, types of gear. If you have never held a two-handed rod, then, or fished a two-handed rod for that matter, then this can seem like quite the jungle. And it is quite the jungle. Um, this video has focus on the Danish salmon fishing. So it's, it's, it's that perspective that we're going to talk about the gear. And in that context, we're going to talk about the gear. So for the Danish salmon fishing, um, the ideal and the optimal for most of the fishing would be two-handed rods um, with a length of approximately 12 to maybe 13, 13.6 feet. Um, and in the, uh, in the weights of seven and eight. A seven and an eight weight uh, two-handed rods rod is not the same as a seven or an eight one-handed rod. Uh, there is quite a lot of difference between the weight of the lines from one hand to two hand. For instance, a one-handed seven weight casts around 18 grams, but a one but a two-handed seven weight casts around 27, 28 grams. So there is a difference there of almost 10 grams. So you cannot. You cannot simply buy a two-handed rod and then use your line from your one-handed rod on this rod. That simply doesn't work. It, work. it will not load the rod. With that being said, then um, at Nordic Anglers, um, we of course pride ourselves a lot with the cost customer support. So if you have any questions regarding any of this gear, do not hesitate to contact us and we will get you sorted on exactly what type of gear you need. But um, also in the shop, we have some ready-made kits. We have some TFO kits, uh, TFO Professional 2 kit, and a TFO Legacy uh, kit with reel and lines and everything. And we will set this up for you, so you will be ready to go fishing on the river um, as soon as you receive your order. We, of course, have a lot of other stuff as well. In particular, this new Nam Rain rod is, is really, really awesome rod, um, but it's also a more expensive rod. So as an entry level, uh, we highly recommend the TFO 200 rods. Both the, both the TFO Pro 2 and the, uh, and the LK Legacy are nice, nice rods and, and will get you, get you started, but also rods that are great to, to work with and to, to develop your fishing with. This is not something you'll have to change, you know, um, as, as soon as you've gotten a bit good at the casting. This is rod, rods and reels you can use for as long as you like, and you can also fish even bigger water than this with these. 
If you're fishing for Norway, um, if you're fishing in Norway, then some of the same gear as as we recommend for Denmark would be uh, would be really nice for fishing perhaps the summertime in Norway or or Iceland or, or stuff like that. But but um, it all depends on the size of the water and how long you you have to cast and uh, and how much space you have and a lot of different factors. But uh, a very good way of starting out, a very great start out kit would be um, around 13 feet in a seven weight. That is probably the most ideal, probably the most versatile uh, gear you can get. So that's it for the rods. In regards to the reel, uh, then the only specification I have to the reel is it, that it has a working break because some of these fish you know, grow quite large and, uh, and they take some very, very nice runs. So be sure you have a reel that has a functioning, functioning and, and well-working break, but also um, a, get a reel that is full-framed. Full-framed means that basically um, the line cannot pop out between the, uh, the actual spool and the casing and the house of the reel. So it has a full frame, fl full frame, and this means when you're fishing with the, with thin shooting lines and stuff, you do not have to worry about the shooting line accidentally um, um, being tangled and moving out here, and this will potentially lose the fish for you. So a full frame reel uh, of, of a decent quality with a with a with a with a sturdy and and good break is 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 a good good thing. Um, regarding the lines, then here in Denmark. Our rivers are different from uh, the rivers in basically most of the rest of the world. They have a very, very deep profile. And also, uh, because Denmark do not have mountains, we don't have these really, really just absolutely gin clear uh, rivers. They, they, they are slightly colored, slightly tea colored, and some of them are even quite muddy. And this means the only way you can actually catch a salmon is if you get your fly down to where the salmons are. So in Denmark we fish a lot with the sinking lines and, uh, and I fish sinking lines throughout the season. Um, the lines and the densities and a lot of that stuff um, can vary a bit um, during the season and, and, and in regards to water level and exactly what river you're fishing. So I would urge you to simply, if you're planning on going here and fishing for salmon, I would urge you, and that's also a really, really good trick always, to talk to someone in the local area of where you're gonna fish and talk to them about how are the conditions just now and what would be the ideal setup for exactly this. On these kits in the shop, we have, uh, we have of course, a line on here. And, uh, and on here we have the most standard, the, most, the best setup for the most situations. So, um, so you can get one line that will, you know, one line will suit most, condi most conditions, but there can't be difference and, and, they, and, and, they, and there can't be, you know, variations that, uh, that you have to take into account. Um, but a lot on how you can cope with these different conditions using that single setup is how we're going to cover. We're going to cover that later on when we talk about fishing tactics in this video as well. So basically, get some gear that you know will work for the place where you're fishing, and uh, and and do not go out and buy, let's say, 15 or 20 different shooting heads and stuff. It's not necessarily 15 or 20 shooting heads you need but you need to know exactly what you need to use and then get that and nothing else. Now it's time to talk about the secrets. It's time to talk about the flies because the fly is on the day the one thing that you can change and actually change how you're fishing and what exactly you're fishing and, 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 and how you know, it's, it's the factor that can make or break the day, at least in the, in the eyes of a lot of, a lot of fly fishermen, a lot of salmon fishermen. So this is my fly box and these are the flies I use 95% of the times. So I have another box with even with, with bigger flies, but what I've, what I've found in the, the past couple of years is my fly size in general has moved down, down, down and down. So I'm fishing smaller and smaller flies. Um, um, the flies here are not secret. I don't have secret flies. Um, I want to share these with you, but these are the patterns that has proven 
absolutely the most successful uh, the past couple of years. Um, there are flies like, you know, the... Uh, um, <laughs> I can't recall what this is called now. I'm, I'm going to get back to that. Ah, it's the horse sock, yeah. The horse sock, which has been very productive. The new pattern for this year, I've, I've called the uh, court gesture. <laughs> what do you say, Niklas? <laughs> I see, man. Prøv lige se et bæst også, den her. Det er jo tre drømmefisk, jeg fanger i dag. Og på fuldstændig samme flue. Da, 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 da. There is also both the tilde and uh, and of course the fly that's dubbed after my well now she's my ex-wife <laughs> Astrid um, and also the French Easy. All of these flies have that in common that they're fairly heavy, so they will fish as soon as they hit the water. Uh, they will start fish, and that is that is crucial for fishing salmon here in in Denmark. All of these flies are available at Nordic Anglers. These are not flies you can you can easily find, you know, it's it's not stocked flies for many of the big fly uh, fly manufacturers. So what we have done is basically I've, I have I have not hired but I've I've sourced out the tying of these to some of my good friends who are avid fly fishermen but also avid fly tires. So the the flies we have of these these patterns in the shop, they're made handmade by Danish fly tires after my specifications. So I know know they're exactly how they should be. And I even have a few of these that are not made by me in my box and I cannot for the life of me figure out which one is mine and which one is some of the other people's. So, um, so, so if you come here to Denmark to fish for salmon, get some of these flies. We of course have the full material kits at, at Nordic Anglers as well. So if you want to buy the materials to tie your own, then, then you, can, you can easily do that by, by getting the material kits for these flies. But these are proven patterns. These are some of the patterns that not only I have caught a lot of salmon, salmon on, but I see a, tr a really, really big trend here in Denmark that a lot of people use these, uh, a lot of these three heckled flies more and more for fishing the Danish salmon. All of these are neatly packed in my CF Design fly case, um, which I think is the best way to stow them. Because on the other side here, I have all my hooks. I have my triple hooks, um, and then I also have my swing tubes. And my swing tubes is my hook guide. The way I use this is like this. Here I have my, uh, my setup I've been fishing the most with today. Um, and, uh, and now would be a good time to talk about the leader. For these sinking lines, you, what you want ideally is not the longest leader. So basically I have about one and a half meter of 0 0.39 um, uh, fluorocarbon leader here. Um, and basically I've just attached this to the, end of my, uh, to the end of my tip on my fly line. These are tube flies and tube flies is really really good for this type of fishing because if you snag, if you catch the bottom with a fly like this, you will only ruin the hook and you can still use the fly. So I have a lot of spare hooks with me on any given day, but I simply just put the, the tube fly, uh, the, the line through the tube fly. Then I put the line through one of these small, um, small hook guides, they're called swing tubes. And then I attach my hook. But before I put this in the water, there is another point to be made. Because in Denmark, we have a lot of restriction. S uh, regarding how to fish for salmon. One of them that is general for all of Denmark is you cannot fish with hooks that has barbs. So be sure to bring a plier so you can deep barb your hooks if you don't have hooks that are deep barbed from the factory already. Um, another thing is as I said about these rules and regulations. If you come to Denmark to fish for salmon, it's really important that you, you, know, you scout out the river you're gonna fish, and then you learn all there is to know about 
what are the specific rules here because you can be fined you can be banned from fishing if you do not uh, if you do not honor the rules regarding the fishing the reason why we have so good fishing salmon fishing in denmark and why uh, denmark is is the only place in the world where the salmon uh, salmon uh, uh, where the salmon stocks are increasing is because we have these rules to protect the salmon so i'm a i'm a Big, big uh, fan of the rules. Always carry your license and stuff uh, um, with you, so it's, it's visible, that's one of them. But the rules vary from river to river, so make sure you know what the specific rules are on that piece of water, that stretch of water that you're gonna fish. When we talk about the, all the, the different things that make your life as a fly fisherman uh, for salmon easier, then of course, uh, I have to mention the flexi stripper. The flexi stripper is basically a line tray that you have mounted on your hip, and and this just when you pull the line and, and you retrieve the line, it will it will stay on here. It will get caught by these uh, these spikes, and this will ensure that you do not catch as much you know weeds when you go on the bank fishing. So it's not it's not it's not absolutely you know uh, you don't you. It's, it's a really nice thing to have and it will, it will make your fly fishing a lot easier, but it's not something you cannot live without. Um, so basically, if you're on a budget, then perhaps that's one of the places where you can save some money and just, you know, live with having, getting caught on all the different weeds and stuff. Another thing that is really essential to my fishing is this. And um, whenever people who don't fish for salmon or don't fish in general see this, they laugh at me and say, oh, that's the biggest optimist net I've, I've ever seen. And I must agree, this is a really, really big landing net. But we're fishing for big fish. And there is a lot of restrictions on uh, when you're allowed to kill a fish. So a big landing net simply uh, makes a lot of sense because it, it, gets, it makes it so much easier to, to land your fish, to control your fish, and control your fish while you, you're actually taking a, a quick photo or, or whatever. But it's also a lot better for the fish because a lot of the time the fish is gonna be released. And, and if you have control of the fish, you can easily remove the hook and the fish will not take as much damage. So I urge you to get a, a salmon net both for your sake, but also for the salmon. Ideally, it should be with rubber, uh, with, with rubber netting, um, because that is the most, um, that is, is, is the best for the fish. Um, this net looks very, very big, and it is very, very big, but it's not that heavy, it's a McLean net. Um, here, what I've done is, is basically just spend less than 100 kroner, less than uh, about 10 euros, I think, on, on buying some elastic band. And then some, uh, and then some, uh, some cramps. And I've just attached a piece of this here. Then I can loop this over the handle, and basically just sling it over my shoulders. And now it's set. And because it is, it is strapped on like this. It's not something that I feel that much. It's easy to carry, and I have it with me all the time. Also, when I hook into a big salmon. So, um, so a net is is really, really good. A lot of some of the times you will be fishing with other anglers and perhaps they will have a, have, have a landing net on their, of their own. But, um, but ideally bring a net because it will, just, it will be better for you in order to take pictures and it will be better for the salmon. And we have to think of the salmon first in this, in this case. Of course bring your deep barb pliers as I mentioned before as well. A pair of sunglasses is nice. We have a lot of sun here in Denmark, and uh, and it's it's just nice to to be able to see a bit more into the water and maybe see some of the some of the contours and some of the uh, the actual runs and and stuff. So so I always wear my, my Polaroid sunglasses. They also protect your eyes from uh, from stray flies and stuff. So 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 they're nice as well. But I think basically that's it for all the small different things that you can carry to the river to optimize your fishing. Oh yeah, of course, remember a spool of tippet. I carry my glasses, my pliers, my net, my uh, flexi stripper, and a line of tippet. And of course, my trusted CF design fly box with my flies. And then I'm good to go.
a big part of fishing salmon and, uh, and of starting out with this salmon fishing is of course how to use the two-handed rod. So um, here I'm going to demonstrate and tell you a little about uh, the way that we do the most of the fishing here in Denmark. We use something called the underhand cast. Basically what that is, is we use the momentum of the line and, and, and the, the, the tension that the leader creates on the water to actually load the rod and, and propel the fly and, and, uh, and the fly line uh, into the desired location. I'm going to show you this a couple of times first. So basically I just pick up the line here, let the leader hit the water and then push it away. Like this, only the leader hits the water and then I let everything go. We're going to break this down a bit uh, even further. I cast all the way on to the, <laughs> to the other side here. That was not intended. Sorry about that. You know, that, that's that what happens. Uh, that is what happens. Um, I'm just going to push this off. Um, so I'm going to show you exactly how this is done again. I have a bit of overhang, that's one of the key elements. As you can see here, this is very easy to spot where my shooting head begins and my running line uh, uh, begins, uh, where my shooting head ends and my running line begins. And what I want to do ideally is to have a bit of this, have a bit of overhang, which means I have the shooting head perhaps a meter from the, uh, from the tip of the rod when I do my casting. So the movement is like this, I move the rod and then I push it a bit further up behind me just to lift the line so it's only the leader that touches the water. And when it's only the leader that touches the water, that, will, that is used to create the tension, to create the, uh, to create the weight that will load my rod and fling my fly towards the other bank. This is something that um, some of you might uh, be familiar with uh, from one uh, from one-handed casting, you know, from roll cast or or switch cast with a one-handed rod. But what can happen, and and it can be a bit difficult to to perfect this in only one cast, because when your fly has uh, has has fished the stretch of water, has has swung across the river, uh, you will you will see that your line is parallel to the to the bank you're standing on, and this will mean that the fly and the line is has of course had time to sink and stuff so it's fairly down deep it can be a bit difficult to nev to negotiate this in only one cast one of the easiest way of actually doing this is to use a single false cast first basically just very very slowly just roll the line up onto the surface then you have the perfect setup for your switch cast the idea here is, as I said, to only have the leader or the tip of the fly line to hit the water. That creates a lot of tension. This tension is the tension you use to load the rod to fling your fly to where it's supposed to go. And that is the whole idea about this. Once you master this, it's going to be a really, really easy, really, really nice way of fishing. You don't have to watch out for, you know, uh, flies, heavy flies, just flying very close to your, to your face and stuff. And, and it's, just, it's just a very, very nice and relaxing way of fishing. But it's not the easiest technique to master. It takes a bit of practice. It takes a bit of, of getting used to. My fly has tangled, so it, it, it doesn't perform well. I'm just going to fix that. Uh, but as I said, it takes a bit of practice. It takes a bit of getting used to. But do not be afraid of actually taking your time to learn this. You can go to, you know, basically you can go to a pond or, or to wherever and to practice this. But this is a, a technique that is best practiced on the water. So again, up. Leader hits the water and then away it goes. But do not be afraid to use a few roll cast just where you where you're basically just straightening out your your shooting head and your and your tippet to get the perfect setup because the setup for this this cast is is really crucial. The overhang is crucial and the setup is crucial. So just use a cast to just a roll cast to just get the line where you want it to be then you have the perfect setup and it's really, really easy just to, to send it away. The main thing about this is 
you do not use your right hand that much. The, the, the hand that actually propels your fly into the right position is your left hand. And to exaggerate a bit, what you do is basically you have, you have here the, the, uh, the, 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 um, the position in which you are about to cast. What you do is, is take heed of the left elbow that is attached to the lower part of the rod. Because what you basically do to cast is you just push the elbow back in place to fling the fly away. You see, I have my elbow all the way up here and then I push it down like this. And this creates, this, this means you will, if you, if you do this the right way, you will not get tired, you will not get, you know, your, your wrists won't get stressed out and stuff. Because basically what you're, you're doing with a firm grip like this, you're telling the rod to cast. You are guiding the rod, you are, you're forcing the rod to cast. It's not your hands that cast, it's your hand that guides the rod, but it's the rod that bends and it's the rod that propels the fly and the fly line. So you just push, boom. This is the, the movement, kind of like with one-handed rods where it's, it's, it's this motion that, that loads the rod and, and propels the fly. It's the same thing here. Right now, in this, uh, at, at exactly this location, um, there is another thing that is quite, quite important to take into consideration when you start out with the salmon fishing. And that is what side of the river you're fishing on. Here we're fishing on the, on, on the right side when you, when you look downstream. And this means that we're actually fishing on the, on the wrong side if you're right-handed. Because this means you will have to use this technique by moving either changing hands, fishing, casting with your left hand, because we need the tension from the water, and the only way we can get that is on this side of, is on the left side of you. You cannot, you can see, you cannot do like this because then you will basically cast the, catch the weeds all the time. So when you're fishing on the right-handed side, when you're fishing on the right side when looking downstream, you'll need to move the rod across your body to actually do the casting, to fish downstream. So this is, this is the most difficult one of the two to learn to fish. And if you can't choose, then choose the left side when looking downstream to start your fishing because it's easier to learn and it's easier to negotiate and it's easier to cast. But you will, it's not always you can decide exactly what side of the river you're fishing. And then it's very, very useful to be able to cast just across the left shoulder and across the right shoulder. And this is across the left shoulder. Sometimes even the water with, with where you're fishing on the left shoulder, shoulder is cheaper than the other one, especially in Norway and stuff. But <coughs> that's it for, the, uh, for how to cast with the two-handed rod for doing a basic switch cast. Up and across. Another great way of fishing with the two-handed rod and to cast the two-handed rod is an overhand cast. Overhand cast is probably the easiest way to start out with this, uh, with this two-handed fishing, but it's, and, and it's very versatile, but it, 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 it sets uh, some requirements to that you have actually have a back cast. The, the way I normally perform it is I do the same roll cast to set up the, the cast as with, uh, with the, with the uh, uh, with the underhand cast and basically just perform the same cast as I would do with a one-handed rod. I send the, uh, fling the line out behind me and then I make a forward motion with my, with my two, uh, two hands. But here, instead of, instead of the double hole, I have this position and then I basically just place my elbow, I return my elbow to the, uh, to the forward position. This forces the rod to bend and to load and flings the fly. Uh, to the desired location near the other bank. Let me just show you again. I use a short roll cast to get it up there, 
one cast backwards, then one forward, and then you can really, really cast really far. The overhand cast is a bit easier to, uh, to, to do, and, uh, and it's highly effective, but it's also, you know, it's a, it's a bit more risky because if there is a lot of wind, you should be wary of the fly so that the fly don't hit you because the flies are heavy, the lines are heavy, and, um, <laughs> and let me tell you from personal experience, it hurts to get hit by a small tube fly mounted with a, with a <laughs> that's bullet shaped, mounted with a, with a triple, triple hook with some really, really razor sharp points. You set the cast up with a roll cast, then you pull the cast behind you, and then you just basically just push again the elbow back to its starting position, creating tension, creating, um, creating bend, and creating the power and momentum to drive your fly to where you want it to be. We have now acquired ourselves some gear. We have the correct license. We have all the flies. We have, we have practiced a lot of casting. Now it's time to talk about how you actually apply these things to an actual fishing situation. Here we have a stretch of water in front of us that looks uh, very good. It's, it's just a, a fairly, fairly even stretch of water. And, uh, and what is important to know about this is uh, you, shan you can imagine that I'm holding here, I'm, I'm positioning my arms in a 90 degree angle. So where I'm standing is a 90 degree angle. The river is in between this 90 degree angle. So what you want to do is you want to place your cast so it flies to the opposite bank in a certain and specific angle. What I'm going to tell you now is a, an approximation of what I think is the most ideal angle for most situations. With, with, uh, with experience and with knowledge of, of of catching a lot of salmon and stuff like that, you will, you will of course know that this is just a generalization. This is what I would say if you do not have any clue, you have not caught any salmon, you have not fished for salmon, you have not done anything like that, then this is approximation of what will be the best in the most situations. Of course, with experience, you're going to switch up things a bit. You're going to try out different angles. You're going to try a lot of different things. But for now, we're talking about your first trip to the river. And what you want to do is ideally you have 90 degrees angle. Here is 45 degrees. And in the Danish rivers, you want to cast a bit shallower than that, a slightly less angle than that. So maybe it depends on where your starting point is, of course, but, but maybe a 60 degree angle or so. So basically you have the 90 degrees. Here, just in between the, the, the two arms is the 45 degrees. And you should do a bit more narrow than that. You should have a bit steeper angle than that. So, I take my line, I make a cast and now my line has has just reached as close to the bank on the other side as possible what you want to do is before the the fly starts swinging you want to you want to make sure that it fishes down deep so what i do is i cast and then i take a step perhaps even two steps depending on the water depths depths and then my fly start to swing what this achieve these two steps you could also just give a bit of line is you, 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 you get the fly to move with the current and you move with the fly downstream, giving the fly time to sink down. So as soon as it will start being pulled across uh, the, the, the river in a, in, a sweeping, in a sweeping arc just downstream from you, uh, you will make sure that the fly has had a bit of time because it lands, 
and then you move with it so it moves down into the water column, down to where the salmon actually is. And, and of course, this, this movement before the fly starts to swing is one of your best ways of actually controlling the depth of your fly at any given piece of the water. So normally I take one step, but if I never ever on a certain stretch of river, never ever hit the bottom, then I take a step more because then I do not fish deep enough. If I hit the bottom all the time, then perhaps I don't even take one step at that particular stretch of water, or I switch to a lighter line or whatever. But we, we have the, uh, the, the way we, we have set this up and talked about this is, we have one setup with line, we have one uh, leader, we have one tip, and, uh, and you can do a lot of things with how many steps you take. You can even take three steps at times, but three steps, then you'll start to lose a bit of control um, in regards to, uh, to, to where your actual fly is and stuff. So you can make zero step, you can make one step, or you can make two steps. And those are the, the, the crucial factor for getting your, your fly even, even further down and making sure that your fly starts to fish the second the second the line tightens and, uh, and, and you feel contact with your fly. So now the fly is down and now it's swinging across. And basically, you can just stand here, follow, follow the line with the rod across the river and just let the fly swing, just let it, let it sweep across the bottom, across, uh, the, uh, across the, uh, the bottom, the, 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 the river floor and search for the salmon. When you look at, it, at, at a cast like this, then the fly will move fastest when it's the furthest away, when it's closer to the other bank, because there will be more pressure from the entire width of the river's water on your line, forcing your fly to fish faster. So it will be fast in the first part, then slower in the middle, and a lot slower when it gets closer to your own bank. In order to make your fly still desirable for a salmon to grab, you can, you can simply just start to retrieve some, some line. So if you feel like your fly is, if it seems like your fly has lost quite a lot of speed because speed is important, then you can basically just start retrieving really, really slowly. So the angle is important, but it's also important that your fly fishes all the way across the river and has enough speed to be interesting for the salmon to grab as it moves across the river. I think those are probably the most important things to think about as a beginner. With these few guidelines, you can fish for salmon and you can be effective fishing for salmon. A lot of this, of course, will be changed up and you'll switch things up and you'll do a lot of different things to your fly and to your leader if you think about the salmon fishing, but a lot of this comes with experience. The first thing you need to do is to get out there, get good at the casts, think about the angle and then start to fish. Because as soon as you fish and you fish with, you know, with the tactics that work for most of the situations, you'll have a chance to catch a salmon. And the best way to get better at salmon fishing is to catch as many salmon as you possibly can. Here we have um, another stretch that looks like it has quite a lot of potential. What we have here is basically just a very, very straight stretch of the river. Um, but when you look at this and, and you look more closely at this and you analyze the water, you'll see that this is not just a completely straight uh, uh, part of the river. We have these big trees with their roots just um, coming out into the current all the way down here. And, and all of those will be potential holding places for, for the salmon. What you need to do is, is to, to try to, to read the water, try to look at the water. And, and on, the, on the straight stretches of river, I've caught many, many salmons. 
you need to pay attention to the water and you need to try and locate and see exactly where on this piece of water would or could a salmon be resting. Um, what you need to look out for is, is um, when you have the current, if there is, you know, a, a big, a big uh, what, a sand dune or a big stone in the water, you'll see the current change quite, uh, quite literally. There will be some turbulence and stuff. And, and whenever there is turbulence, that means that something different is happening right there. And that could potentially be a place where the salmon would rest. That's the same thing you'll see out here. When, where you have the, uh, the, tree, the tree roots that, that goes out into the river, there is some strange turbulence right outside there, and, and that, is, that is a good place to, to try and cast your fly, because that is, is one of the places whenever the current changes and, and makes something that looks different, then try to cast your fly there. Another thing you need to, to pay attention to is if the river gets more narrow. Because every time the river gets more narrow, the same amount of water has to pass through that. That means the water will, the water speed will, will rise, but also that the water depths there quite possibly will be deeper. And that is a really, really good place to, to, uh, to cast your fly, because whenever the water gets deeper and faster, that's a good holding spot for salmon. We have that just down there. Um, that looks really, really awesome. Um, the, the, the river gets a bit narrow, uh, more narrow, and then also there is a very, very big pot of weed, uh, which, which further, in, further um, makes the, the profile of the river more narrow, um, and, and, and that speeds, really speeds up the water. It makes it a lot more deep, and, uh, and that is probably, I would say, the best bet for finding a salmon today on this stretch of the river. So, fish the water that you have, but try to fish it um, with the knowledge that not every single meter of the water is as likely to hold a fish as, as, as any other meter. There are places that will be, you will have a, a, a bigger chance of actually hooking a salmon. Um, of course, if you only have that stretch of water, then fish that and, and fish it thoroughly um, and try to make your own, um, um, try to get your own experiences and, uh, and, and that is the most valuable of all. But whenever you come to, uh, you arrive at a new water, try to walk the water and to see. And if you fish a water like this, then perhaps um, fish very, very intensively at the roots there, there. Then maybe there is a stretch of water that doesn't look as good. Fish that fast and then concentrate your casts and concentrate your effort on the places that looks the most like here could be a salmon. Another one of the really, really uh, great places to, to, uh, to, uh, to concentrate your fishing is of course all the bends in the river. Um, but I find that it's very seldom in the middle of these bends uh, where you can see the current. Sometimes it even moves the other way around. It's, it's not there where you can find the, the salmon that will grab your fly. It's very often in the beginning of, of a curve or in the ending of a curve because the current will move normally will move from one part of the from one side of the river to the other side of the river making making it um oh now there is a lot of wind here it doesn't matter stephen okay so um so it's in the it's the entrance to the to the curve to uh, or in the or or in the exit of the curve it's very seldom in the middle of the curve you there can of course be uh, exception to these rules but uh, but but normally i focus my fishing at the start of the curve so if you for if you imagine that this is the curve of the river uh, and and we're fishing here then what i would do is i would focus my fishing on the stretch of water up to the curve then of course fish the curve, but fish it quite fast, and then fish the tail part of the uh, of the actual curve as well, because it's very often, and I've I found most of, of my fishing curves at the tail part of the curve, because more often than not the current will change from one side to the other, and that is just really really different, d d d uh, very very dangerous. Whenever the the current uh, changes from one side of the river, the the the, the fast and deep and deep part of the river switches from one side to the other, that's very, very often the best places to find a salmon. Here we have two different things that are some of my favorite that are combined. We have the, the tail end of, uh, of one of these curves on the river, but also the river here, it narrows 
quite a lot down. And when, whenever the river uh, gets narrow, it gets deeper and it gets faster. And deeper and faster water are where the salmon live, or not live, but, but where the salmon are. So, so here we have the tail end of a bend, which is good in its own right, but we also have the water uh, is, is speeding up, it's, it's flowing faster, um, and, uh, and the, the, river, the river is narrower. And those things combined are just really, really magical. So down here is a really, really excellent spot. And, uh, and you, can, you can feel it with, with your fly. You can see your fly line is moving more rapid across the current. And this is an indication that the current is faster. When the current is, is faster, it's most times uh, due to, to the, of course, it's due to the water is moving faster. But if you have a narrow river as well, it's because it's deep. Because the same amount of water has to pass through it. So it speeds up. It gets deeper, and, uh, and that is really, really good. We have that just out here. That was what we had planned for this uh, this uh, beginners a beginner's guide to to salmon fishing. Um, what you might see in this film is is uh, uh, we 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 could not make this a movie like this is quite a big project. Uh, it's something that takes more than one trip, so so we have to spend quite a lot of time on actually producing, on editing, on filming uh, a project like this. And the only reason why we are able to produce content like this is because people shop at Nordic Anglers. Nordic Anglers is, uh, the, the purchase you make there pays our salary and, and enables us to make content like this. So um, we know that the movies are free and, uh, and of course watch them as much as you can, but they're only possible. Projects like this are only possible because people visit Nordic Anglers and buy fly tying and fly fishing equipment from us. So if ever you're in need of any fly tying or any fly fishing related items, it would mean so much to us if you would swing by Nordic Anglers to get some uh, at our store. Because if you like this content, then that's the way you can help us out producing more like this. We of course love our jobs, you know. It's, it's, it's the dream to be able to be here and, and do stuff like this and, uh, and that's just phenomenal. Um, the only other thing I want to say about salmon for now is get out here. Get out and try this if you haven't done so already. If you have but you still have not caught your first salmon, then hang, hang in there. Hang in there because you're gonna get one eventually. Salmon is not something you will catch on every single trip. There is a lot of walking involved, there is a lot of casting involved, but I mean to spend a full day here without catching a salmon is not a day wasted. It's a day well spent, even though you don't catch a salmon. I didn't get one this time and I didn't get one last time. And that's just how it is. So I can only urge you to, uh, to pick up a two-handed rod, to pick up this salmon fishing, because there's just so many awesome, awesome moments out on the water practicing the art of salmon fishing and I hope you will try it. So, I guess that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching. Remember to press the bell and subscribe to the channel and all that, you know. <laughs> Otherwise, as I said, I wish you the very best of luck out on the water. And thank you again for watching and thank you again for visiting nordicanglers.com.